Hi everyone, it's Ken here. If you came here looking for my next uh, clock video in my clock making series, you're going to have to be patient for a while because I've decided to upgrade my workshop. Those of you who follow uh, John Saunders on the NYC CNC channel probably know that he uses Tormach machines and at an open house out in Ohio a month or so ago. And I was fortunate enough to attend that, and when I saw the Tormach machines, I decided that it was time for me to upgrade. Um, I've been using my current Sherline equipment for about eight years now, and those of you who have been following me for a while have seen that I've made quite a few nice projects with them. So I want you to understand there's nothing wrong with these machines, it's just that I'm taking the next step in this hobby. Uh, it's become very serious to me and I just needed or probably just wanted uh, a, a bigger machine. So I'm putting my entire Sherline workshop up for sale. Uh, the mill, the lathe, and pretty much every attachment Sherline makes because over the years, well, I've just acquired them. So uh, what I'd like to do in this video is take you on a tour of what I have and, uh, and what's up for sale. I should point out that I live in New Jersey and this is way too much equipment to ship. So uh, if you are interested, you're going to need a way to get here with a truck or an SUV or something. Uh, but other than that, let's, let's get started taking a look at what we have. As you can see, I've got my mill and my lathe set up. This is the way I, I use them in the videos uh, and, you know, when I'm making projects. Uh, I guess we'll start with a, with a tour of the mill. Both of these machines started out as a standard Sherline uh, mill and lathe. Uh, if you go to their website, uh, which I will provide a link for in the description, they have something that they call their ultimate CNC pack. And that's what this was. Sherline lathe, Sherline mill, a controller, and a single computer to run. With uh, a handful of the uh, tools uh, that you need, you know, to get started. I used that Sherline mill for years, but eventually it ran out of capacity for the things that I was making. That's not a fault of the mill. Um, that's, you know, me making parts that are bigger than what the machine was intended for. So what I did, there was a company, I'm not sure that they're in business anymore, but there was a company called A to Z, and they made uh, upgrade parts for a, for a Sherline mill, which were much larger. Uh, it gave you much more X, Y, and Z travel. So I bought those upgrade parts um, and, and built this. I then added bellows uh, on, on all the axes here. Now, this was quite a project. The bellows themselves, the, the, these accordion pieces, are ridiculously expensive. And they're hundreds of dollars. And then in addition to that, I had to make all of the, uh, the mounting fixtures and brackets and so forth to make this all work. So this is a pretty involved project, but the result is great uh, because it, you know, it keeps, your, keeps your ways clean. Um, they're all attached with thumb screws, so it's easy to lift them out, clean anything that does sneak under there, not much, but you will find some stuff, and then, you know, oil them and put them back together again. Additionally, I rebuilt my own head for the machine, and I had a number of different reasons for doing this. Um, if, if you're familiar with the original Sherline configuration, Everything is out here at the front with the spindle. The motor is out here, the speed controller is out here, and it was always in my way. When, you know, when you're trying to set up a, you know, a, a small part on here, you're always banging your head in here to make, when you're trying to read the indicator and so forth. So, uh, plus, I think that this is a much better weight distribution by moving the motor back you know, closer to the Z-axis. So, you know, it's fully driven like it used to be, but it's a longer pulley. 
Um, I also added a ton of mounting holes all over here. Uh, they're all threaded 1032. And it's great for being able to add, you know, attachments, indicators, all sorts of cool things. One of the other nice features of this head is it's fully adjustable for tramming the mill, you know, both in tilt, uh, you know, left to right, and in nod, you know, front to back. And the way I've done that, uh, you just, uh, there's, a, there's a set screw on the spindle itself. Uh, that was always there. Sherline does the same thing. Uh, but I guess you can't see them from this angle. But there are, there are screws that I've added, uh, both on the side here and on the bottom. And once you've got the indicator in place and you're seeing how far out of tram you are, by just making tiny adjustments to these screws, you're, you're pivoting uh, the head, and you can do it in very, very fine increments. Uh, you know, like I said, both this way and that way. So it only takes minutes to tram this machine. And once it's trammed, you just lock the set screw down and you're done. Uh, I also have a, uh, a cool mist attachment uh, on the machine. Uh, it's just attached magnetically, uh, and I have magnetic pads on both sides of the machine for things like that. What Cool Mist does, it comes with a, with a chemical, and I'll be supplying a gallon of that, uh, which when it's mixed with air, it gets incredibly cold. So it keeps your tool cold, um, and it's also blowing a stream of air. <clears throat> and in instances where you don't need the the mist, because this is mist, it's not flood. Um, you can adjust the nozzle here and just let air go out, which is what I do when I'm milling something like brass, because you always want to clear the chips when you're cutting anything. I also upgraded the stepper motors, because, uh, because this machine is so much larger, you know, it needed more powerful steppers. So I put uh, 276 ounce uh, steppers on, on all the axes. I also upgraded the, uh, the lead screws to Kirk uh, lead screws which are beautifully machined and they're permanently lubricated. So this machine really uh, you know, works beautifully and, and you, I know you've seen me use it a million times in my videos. Uh, so uh, what started as a Sherline mill, there's not a whole lot of Sherline left, but the parts of Sherline that matter, which is the spindle and the motor and so forth, because that's how you connect, you know, all your tooling to it, that's all standard Sherline. So everything, all of your Sherline accessories work with this mill without any uh, modification. By the way, I should mention that the upgrades on this are, are very expensive. The, the A to Z parts were probably about a thousand dollars. You know, another maybe 300 for the bellows, believe it or not. Next, I had to upgrade the controller because the Sherline controller wouldn't handle the, the big steppers that I've put on here. So this is a box made by a company called Soygenerous. And actually, what's inside it is a Gecko uh, G540, I believe, and a smooth stepper USB card. Old controllers, including the Sherline one, were always driven by a parallel port attachment. And today, getting a parallel port on, on a new computer is nigh on impossible. And in fact, a lot of the new computers you buy today don't even have expansion slots for adding one. So by having a USB connection on here, it sort of uh, you know, future proofs it. Um, so this just sets up as a USB device. And it has a zillion outputs on the back for controlling other things. And what I did was I took the Sherline speed controller apart and made some modifications to the electronics. I mean, there are documents on how to do that. And I threw it into this box. What this allows me to do, if it's in manual mode here, it works just like the old Sherline controller. You turn the dial and you're changing the speed of the spindle motor. But, when it's up in the computer position, it's all software controllable. So, 
you know, if your G-code issues uh, an S2000 command, you're setting the spindle speed to 2000, and uh, you know, when you go, it, it goes, and well, it's all automatic. And believe me, that was the nicest uh, upgrades I made. Um, now, once again, you know, this box was, you know, the box and the steppers and so forth was probably another thousand or more, um, you know, to do all of this. So that pretty much covers the hardware aspects of the mill. From a software point of view, you're probably all aware that I use uh, Mach 3 as my controller, and I've upgraded the, the screen set on here. I forget the company that made this screen set, but um, it's just a much nicer interface. You know, it's the same software, it's just the look and feel is, is different on here. Now, I'll be including a copy of Mach, my copy of Mach 3, um, you know, with this, with this setup. The computers have also been upgraded. They are, you can't, they're, they're behind the workbench, you'll have to trust me on this, but they are relatively new Dell machines. I mean, I bought them in the last year or so. And uh, they're running Windows 10, so they're, you know, ready to go. I, you know, they're, they're networkable if, if you choose. That's the way I do it. I just generate my G-code on my CAD machine and then just shoot it over the network to these. Um, you know, it's wireless I'm talking about. So you're going to get a computer, a monitor, and I'll show you the keyboard and such in a moment, but uh, separate computers for, for the mill and the lathe. Because um, originally, you know, Sherline just shipped you with one computer and then you've got to switch back and forth and change cables every time you want to move back and forth. It's a nightmare. I just took the easy way out and put, you know, two separate computers on. For controlling the the computer, I went crazy as I normally do, and I bought the uh, this, this is the top of the line Logitech keyboard and mouse. They're they're wireless, so you can you know go wherever you want with them. And again, you get a set of these for for both machines. And I also have a Shuttle Pro connected to both machines, and this acts as a as a jog shuttle. Uh, Mach three has uh, a plug-in that makes this all work. Uh, you can configure all the buttons on here through Mach 3. I only use the top four um, and I use them to control which axis I'm using. So, uh, just so you know, when you buy this thing, this is X, Y, Z, and then A, which is your fourth axis. Uh, so, if we were to pick the X axis here, and start moving one click at a time, uh, although you can't see it, the x-axis is moving one one thousandth on each click of the, of the shuttle. That's in the positive direction, you go the other way, it's moving in the negative direction. And then this outer wheel here lets you do large movements, and it's, um, you know, the more you turn it, the faster it goes, which is really nice. This is really handy for, for doing your setups and so forth. So I think that pretty much sums up the mill. We'll go over the accessories uh, later on in this video. Let's take a look at the lathe now. I didn't do uh, many modifications to the lathe. This is pretty much the way uh, Sherline intended it. Uh, on both machines I've added these uh, these support legs with adjustable feet. And on this machine, I've added a steel plate in the back here, which is great for attaching, you know, magnetic things, uh, indicators, lights, whatever. Uh, the only other modification I made, which comes off really easily, but I wouldn't suggest you do that, is a set of adjustment screws, just like I did on the mill. So when you are setting this up to make sure it's you know exactly straight on with the tail stop. Uh, again, you have uh, two set screws here and you can just with very, very small uh, twists, you can you know make changes uh, fractions of a degree. Um, 
time. So you just do that and then lock the spindle back down. Everything else is you know pretty standard. You've got this is the original speed controller that I was telling you about. Uh, but this is how it used to work. On the mill, I mean. And then um, I I'm gonna give you a, a, a box full of different tool posts for mounting things, but the one I use most of the time is this quick change tool post, uh, again from A to Z. Um, it, it's really sweet. Uh, you've probably seen these on bigger mills, but or lathes. But um, you know, you just you know drop your tool on here and you're ready to go. Um, you know, if you work well you wouldn't put a cut of a plate over there, but you know, if you're working from the other side, uh, facing, you would just do it that way. Um, as far as setting the tool height, Sherline supplies this little goodie. And when the tool tip is touching the bottom here, um, you are at center line. So it makes it really easy to set up your tools. And on something like this, once you set the tool height, you'll, you, you lock it with these uh, screws here. and um, it stays. In a lot of my projects, I've needed to increase the capacity of the lathe, and Sherline makes what they call uh, riser blocks. And what the riser blocks do, I guess they, well, here it is actually. So this is an inch and a half. This comes off, this goes on, and then this mounts on top of it. So it's going to give you another inch and a half of, uh, of radius, or three inches of diameter, that you can cut. And this has the adjustments on it, too. Um, <clears throat> in order for that to work, you need to be able to make all your tools higher, and you need to make your tailstock higher. Well, don't worry. Every part that you need to raise everything up is supplied as part of this package. Um, <clears throat> so you can work, you know, the way Sherline intended it originally or with their uh, upgrade package to make it taller. To control this lathe, I'm st still using the original Sherline controller. And you can see here's the parallel port attachment I was talking about before. But, same problem, new computers, no parallel port. So I bought this fancy schmancy little box for another couple of hundred dollars. What this does is it takes the Ethernet uh, output from your machine, converts it to parallel, and then sends it right into this box. So it's totally transparent. You don't, you don't do anything with this box except plug it in. But this, again, future-proofs things because I think Ethernet will be around for a while. So, you get all of that cool stuff. And just like on the, on the mill, I use Mach 3 on the lathe as well. Again, this is through its own separate computer. Um, the only thing you're not going to get are these pivoting uh, swing-out monitor arms. I'll put these monitors back on their, on their regular stands. So, I think that's um, a good summary of what the machines are. Uh, I'm now going to take you over and show you the, all the accessories. Um, if you have general questions about this, uh, you know, please put them in the, uh, in the comments section below this video. You'll be getting a real nice assortment of chucks with this package. All of the tooling, or certainly most of it, uh, is switchable between the lathe and the mill because they all have the same uh, thread on the spindle. This is the four-jaw independent chuck. It's the most accurate of the group because you can set each jaw independently and zero in apart. And this is the four-jaw self-centering chuck. I find it to be incredibly accurate, and I use it a whole lot. And then I have two identical uh, three-jaw self-centering chucks. Sureline lets you reverse the jaws on the chuck, which I've done on this one. What this lets you do is hold larger pieces because you're holding them at the outer perimeter of the jaw. 
The other chuck, I've left the jaws the way they are, and you're grabbing apart through the inner perimeter of the jaw. Um, like I said, the, the jaws are reversible, and you can switch them back if you like. I went a little crazy buying drill chucks, and I have, I think, every one that they make. Uh, with this adapter, they mount on the mill. And with the Morse taper adapter, they mount on the tailstock of the lathe. Keep in mind, however, that the adapters come right off, and you can swap them around and use them any which way you like. No shortage of uh, chuck keys. This little goody, uh, Sherline calls the sensitive drilling attachment. It's made for holding tiny drill bits, like your numbered bits. It mounts in the spindle of the mill, and it's spring-loaded. This allows you to move the drill bit into the workpiece as slowly as you like. Uh, it's great for working with tiny bits so that you don't snap them. This is the faceplate for the lathe, and it comes with a lathe dog for turning between centers. You've seen me use the faceplate for all sorts of things. I mount uh, fixture plates on them. That's how I cut the gears. I just super glued them to the arbors. These little guys are for cleaning out the T-slots on, on both machines. I have two different fly cutters. This one mounts uh, in a collet and the other one mounts in the Morse taper. And I'll be supplying two unused uh, additional uh, cutting tools to go with these. The boring head is for cutting very precise circles. Um, it's micro-adjustable for the diameter, mounts in the Morse taper of the mill spindle, and there are a couple of uh, tools or bits that I've supplied with that. Way too many hex keys. These are your step blocks, very handy for holding uh, your work down. They're adjustable over a wide range just by moving the, uh, the toe clamp over the steps. And then a screw holds it down into your fixture plate. And believe me, there are plenty of screws. I'm giving you a ton of those, a whole box full of them. A nice assortment of center drills in the three sizes that Sherline makes. There are a zillion ways to hold tools, um, particularly end mills. These are the standard uh, holders that uh, Sherline makes. They have a set screw, and I'm supplying uh, all the different sizes. I guess that's three-eighths, quarter, and eighth. And then because you can never have enough ways to try things, I bought the A to Z equivalents of those tools. They work exactly the same way. These are really nice. These are ER16 collet holders. Uh, I'll be supplying uh, three collets in 3 8 quarter, and eighth inch. The collets just uh, snap into the nut. You put your tool in and tighten it up. These parts are not Sherline parts. They're actually made by Tag. The tag spindle thread is very similar to the Sherline. I mean, the thread is the same, but there's a, a little difference on it. So if you want to use tag tools, you have to face off uh, the bottom of the thread. If you were to hold uh, an original tag tool next to a Sherline, you'd see immediately that there's just a part, a little bit that has to come off. I've already done this on these tools. But I'm just pointing out that you can do it on other tag tools, uh, you know, should you find any that you like. You just mount them up on the lathe and face off the bottom of the, uh, of the nut. And as if that wasn't enough ways to mount a tool, here is a quick change adapter. Again, this mounts in the mill spindle. This also holds uh, ER16 collets.
when it's in the mill, you just pull up on this spring-loaded part, pop it in, release the spring, and you're ready to go. So it's very nice for changing tools quickly. So I'm supplying this whole pile. I mean, I spent, you know, eight years experimenting with this and trying all different ones. But, you know, you get to, you know, fast forward and try them all out for yourself. This is a complete set of uh, carbide-tipped uh, boring bits. They come in different uh, lengths and thicknesses uh, depending on what size hole you're boring and how deep it is. I'm supplying all of my uh, high-speed end mills, high-speed steel. Um, there's actually two complete sets in here, one four-flute and one two-flute. Um, just about all of them are double-ended. And I barely use these. These are pretty much in new condition. I was a, or still am, a fan of carbide. Um, but th there's nothing wrong with high-speed steel. Um, and you'll be able to uh, do quite a bit with these. I think they range from a 3 8 inch uh, diameter down to an eighth of an inch. Next we have your centers for the, for the lathe. Uh, this is for uh, machining between centers, as the name implies. This big guy here is a ball bearing uh, driven. It's a live center and it's, it's great for when you're machining cylinders. You know, they just uh, you know, sit on the end of that nose. And then here's a, a, a normal uh, live center. This would hold onto a pilot hole. And then I have a bunch of uh, dead centers. They're all Morse taper, and they go into the tailstock. What I'm showing here is the uh, A to Z tailstock. This is the one you would use if you were, uh, if you had the riser blocks in place on the lathe. And what's really nice about it is it's adjustable in every which watch direction, so you can, you know, perfectly align the tailstock to the spindle. Although I showed you the quick change tool post on the lathe, um, I'm also supplying all of the various Sherline uh, normal tool posts, and they come in both the extended height for the riser block as well as the normal height. I actually use these um, from time to time, even though I have the quick change. Um, it, it just depends on what you're working on. These are just some of the riser blocks I'm including. Like I said, you'll have riser blocks for every one of the Sherline accessories I'm giving you. This is the threading attachment for the lathe. I love using this. It comes with a zillion gears and a chart. The chart tells you which uh, collection of gears will cut a particular thread pitch. Um, you remove the motor on the lathe, uh, replace it with this, and then the handle that you see here is used to, uh, well, to run the thing. Um, and you know when it's when it's all set up, and again the directions are all included in here, but when it's all set up. It does everything for you, just like a full-size lathe would with, uh, you know, built-in threading. You know, it advances both axes for you. Um, you know, you take shallow cuts um, on each pass. You, you back off, advance in a little deeper uh, in X, and then uh, make your next pass until you've gotten to the full thread depth. These are the tool holders that go with the quick change tool post. I'm supplying a full collection of these. Um, you know, they, there's one for a boring bar, one for a cutoff tool, and the others are all the standard ones. Of course, you get the complete fourth axis for the lathe. This also has the upgraded stepper on it. Uh, you just plug it in. There is a much longer cord attached to the controller, um, so you can put this pretty much anywhere. And you can mount it horizontally, vertically, or as you can see, I've got it mounted on the angle plate, and this allows you to mount it at any angle you want. And of course, you can also remove that from the angle plate and use the angle plate to position your, you know, other work pieces that you're, well, milling at an angle. You can mount chucks on this thing. Uh, it's, very, it's extremely versatile and very accurate, too. 
I'm also including in the box uh, a couple of plates that I made that sit under this, uh, you know, all the right screw holes in them. Because sometimes if you're working on something that the diameter is just, you know, too big, uh, you might want to lift it up off the table. And you've seen me do that in my videos. These are some fixture plates uh, that you can just mount on, on the mill. And, you know, they're all tapped uh, 1032. Uh, it's great for holding you know, parts down. And they're meant to be sacrificial. You can cut into them. This is actually a tailstock for the mill. Uh, you'd use this when you're using the fourth axis if you're, you know, machining a large piece. Um, you know, it works just like on, on the lathe. You'd set, it, you'd set that large piece up between centers. And this, of course, is adjustable, so you can align it perfectly. This is called a slim vise, and if you don't know what it what that is, uh, take a peek on YouTube and look for slim vise. It's sort of a rite of passage. I think this was the first part I made on the mill. It's used for holding very thin uh, pieces of stock that need to be machined. That back part there mounts in the uh, rear T slot on your mill table. And then this guy mounts in the, in the front T-slot. And you'll notice there's a, a chamfer around the opening that's left. And that's where you would hold your thin stock. And then you just use the, uh, the knob and the screw to you know, tighten this whole thing up. And if you're working with smaller pieces, I've made a, a, you know, a larger movable jaw. These you've seen me use lots of times. They're the uh, work holding uh, tools that uh, A to Z makes. Uh, they just go in your T slots. And uh, they pivot. So you can, you know, hold various thicknesses of material to, you, to your work table. And, uh, you know, depending on the size or the length of the screw that you use, uh, you have quite a bit of flexibility. And I'm supplying a whole bunch of these in uh, small, medium, and large sizes. So it really covers a whole range of things that you might want to hold. And if that's not enough, uh, this is a clever little kit uh, for holding uh, thin pieces uh, down to your table. What makes this neat is that the screws are uh, cam arrangement. You know, they're off center. So as you're tightening those discs, uh, they're moving toward uh, the workpiece uh, so you can, you know, set your, your grip. If you watched my orrery video where I made a solar system, you saw that I made uh, spherical planets out of exotic woods. And if you ever wondered how to cut a sphere on a lathe, well, you buy the sphere cutting attachment, which is this little baby. Uh, again, the directions will show you how to set it up, and if you watch my videos, you'll see it in use, but uh, this is great for cutting spheres. This is the knurling attachment for the lathe. There are two little knurls in there, and it's adjustable. Uh, you can, you know, you place it on your cross slide, you put the, the workpiece uh, in between those, and then uh, you make multiple passes back and forth, uh, tightening the screw on each one until you get to the desired depth. Use a ton of cutting fluid when you're using this. And then uh, slitting saws. I'm supplying uh, three different slitting saws. And because I've spent my life experimenting, I'm supplying three different uh, holders for slitting saws. When I showed you the uh, quick change tool post on the lathe, I told you that I also had uh, a way of making it taller for when you're using the uh, riser blocks. This is the part you need. Uh, you just pop out the thin one that's in there and put this bigger guy in there. This was another experiment of mine. I purchased this. This is for cutting thin stock and I told you on my mill head I had put lots of holes for attachment. So this would attach to the to the side of the of the mill head. And, it ha and if you have a thin piece of stock that, let's just say, you've used a double-sided tape or something to hold it down to your table, 
this gives you an added measure of, of holding because what it's doing, it's, it, it's spring-loaded and it's got a slippery bottom on it. And this will sort of slide around on top of your workpiece with the cutting bit going through that hole in the middle. So wherever you're cutting, you're applying downward pressure. Uh, it just ensures that nothing comes ripping loose. This is the steady rest for the lathe, and I've modified it and added ball bearings to the end of the fingers. Uh, it, it originally comes just with those uh, pieces of brass, or they're probably bronze, uh, and they, you know, they just rub against your the workpiece you're trying to support, and they make a mess. So by adding ball bearings in there, I've made this tool uh, a whole lot more usable. These are the cutting tools I'm supplying for the lathe. Uh, most of them are high-speed steel. Um, there's a whole variety in here. That one is for cutting uh, threads with the thread cutting attachment. That's for uh, outer threads. And then these two were for cutting uh, internal threads. And the rest of these are just your standard, you know, left and right hand cutting tools. And there's a, a number of uh, cutoff blades as well. And I told you I'd be giving you plenty of screws, and uh, actually there'll be even more in this box when I'm done packing it up. But those are your screws and your, uh, your, your T-slot uh, holders. They're all just standard 1032. Here's the gallon of fluid I told you comes with the, uh, with the cool mist. And you just uh, fill that little bottle with that, uh, mix the, and then mix the whole solution with a gallon of water. Uh, so this will last you uh, 12 lifetimes. And then I'm supplying uh, uh, some whey oil and some uh, super lube for the... Uh, the super lube I, I use on the lathe, the whey oil you use on both machines. Um, whey oil, I mean, you know, you can get crazy buying all sorts of expensive stuff, or you can just use uh, motor oil. I think like a 10W30, if I'm not mistaken, is pretty much the same as whey oil. This is the compound slide for the lathe. Most full-size lathes come with one of these, but with a sure line, it's just an expensive attachment. I currently have it mounted on the riser block, but you can just remove that black piece with the screws and mount it directly to the cross slide. The engraving on the side lets you set a very precise angle, and, um, and then you just use the hand wheel to advance the tool. I'm also supplying a full set of uh, manuals and documentation. Uh, I'll remind you, though, that uh, all of this is available on the web, uh, most of it on the Sherline site. If you've never uh, used equipment like this before, I really suggest you start with the assembly and instruction guide that you see there. Um, it gives you a good introduction to the two tools. I'm also supplying uh, Joe Martin's book on uh, tabletop machining. This is sort of the uh, Bible of uh, working with small machines. Uh, Joe Martin was the founder of Sherline and the inventor of these machines, and sadly he passed away uh, a couple of years ago. You'll also find the Soy Generous controller documentation in here, and uh, all, well, just all sorts of uh, things that you'll find useful. In addition to everything I've shown you, I'm also supplying all of these goodies. This is, these are the parts that are left over from the upgrade to the mill. So, you know, this is essentially a Sherline mill. Obviously it's going to be missing some of the parts because I had to use them in the, in the upgraded mill. You may want to play with this, you may want to buy some extra parts from Sherline and turn it into another mill, a manual mill if you want. Although I am supplying the steppers as well because, because you know, they're upgraded on the new mill. You know, there's another spindle here, um, you know, the pulley, there are belts for the, the upgraded setup and the existing Sherline setup, a box full of goodies here. Lots of uh, hand wheels and all sorts of various uh, parts. <laughs> so if you're so inclined, you can make something out of this. There's also a whole bunch of uh, spare gibs. 
One of the things I had thought about doing with these spare parts, I just never got around to it, was making an XY table for my drill press. You've got, you know, most of the parts here that you'll, that you'll need to do that, again, should you be so inclined. Anyway, I just want to make sure you have everything that I had so that you can get started. Uh, you know, you've, I probably have every, sure, every accessory that Sherline makes, you know, we just went through all of those. So this is a, a truly a complete um, CNC workshop. All in all, this is probably uh, $10,000 worth of equipment or, or more. Um, if you go to the Sherline site, and again, I will put links uh, in the video description, just the base package, the original package that I bought, that all of this is leveraged from, um, costs between five and six thousand dollars depending on which options you buy with it. And that doesn't include all of the upgrades I made to the mill, it doesn't include all the new controllers, the extra computer, the monitors, the wireless keyboards, the jug shuttle, uh, and obviously all of the attachments. So what I'd like to do is get five thousand dollars for this complete shop. I think that's more than a fair price. I know it's a lot of money, uh, for someone who's just getting started, but there really isn't a cheaper way to get started. I mean, that's just what this stuff costs, even if you were to go buy it new. Uh, and obviously, if you bought it new, you wouldn't get all the attachments and, and whatnot, uh, not, at least not at that price. So, like I said, I'm, I'm in New Jersey. You will have to come to pick this up. It's going to be packed up you know, in boxes because, you know, I need the room for my new mill which should be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, so it will, all be, it will all be packed up. Um, you know, you can certainly free to look through it when you get here, but uh, it won't be set up and, and ready to try. You'll, uh, you know, a lot of you guys know me, I mean, not personally, but, but you've, you've seen my work and watched my videos. You know, I'm not here to to screw anybody. I mean, this is all working stuff. It's all in very good working condition. Uh, so I think it's I think it's a great deal. Um, I hope one of you uh, does as well, because I'd really love to have this end up in the hands of someone who has the kind of passion that um, is deserving of, uh, of this equipment. If you have questions about what I've shown you, put those in the description under the video and I will respond to them as quickly as I can. If you'd actually like to contact me, you know, to arrange a sale, um, you can private message on YouTube. I know it's hard, I don't know why they make the link so hard to find, but I will try to find the link. Here's how to send a private message on YouTube. Uh, which you can use to contact me if you're interested in arranging a, a purchase. When you're watching anyone's videos, uh, right under the description is going to be the, uh, the name of the channel. If you just click on that, it will take you to this page. Click on the About, and then in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see something labeled Send Message and you can type whatever you want here. And then send it. And the only person who will ever see this message is the owner of the channel. So that's the best way to contact me uh, regarding this uh, sale. Um, and then, you know, we can communicate offline um, and uh, you know, arrange for uh, this stuff to become yours. So, thank you all so much for watching this, and uh, please spread this video around to uh, any of your friends, acquaintances, whoever might be interested. I mean, you know, maybe there's a local high school that would that would appreciate this, uh, or or a, a maker club of some sort. Um, yeah, you guys have a ton of contacts between you, so uh, let's find a great home for this stuff, and uh, happy machining. I'll see you all soon. Take care. For those of you who have been following my clock-making videos, I apologize for the delay. 
Uh, obviously, I have to wait for these uh, machines to come, which hopefully will be in the next week or so. And then I have to assemble them, and then I have to figure out how to use them. But I promise uh, I'm going to uh, use those machines to uh, finish this clock. So please be patient. Take care, guys.